everybody, this is Perch, and uh, I, somebody said that they like the uh, slight ambient noise of the car in some of these videos. Um, other people say it's absolute trash. I, I would like the, dude, you're getting to be a big channel. Afford a better microphone. It's like, <laughs> and now I'm driving around. Man, I'm, I'm driving around. Anyway, I hope you like the ambient noise. It's raining like hell. Uh, but, but it's Seattle. I mean, what are you going to do? It's, it's, uh, it's wet here. I guess it could be frozen. Things could be worse. Uh, anyway, we're coming up at the end of Future State. So by the time this video airs, we'll have hit our final week. And I'm just going to go ahead and make this video in advance of the comics for this last week. It's possible that everything in week eight completely changes. Like the whole thing is different from uh, what happened in the previous seven weeks. But I, I think we've got a pretty good accounting of it. And it's, um, it's, it's worth kind of taking a look at, at Future State, the event that uh, really got out of hand in the sense that uh, everybody but DC was controlling what Future State was going to be. This all started, of course, when Bleeding Cool published a number of articles um, talking about how 5G was going to you know, replace all of the characters that you know and love, the white guys, with diverse and uh, completely different characters to fulfill the rainbow coalition of comic characters. Now, none of this was actually true, uh, but it didn't stop them from running the articles. And as they ran the articles in this weird symbiotic relationship that uh, a number of YouTubers have with Bleeding Cool, uh, they ran with the, uh, the, the SJW menace invades all of comics and will destroy DC forever. And uh, Bleeding Cool, of course, that was what they wanted because then they got to publish follow-up articles talking about the racist bigots on YouTube who don't like diversity. And it was a, the circle of life was completed. Like, who would be surprised, by the way, if some of the more uh, outspoken YouTubers and uh, Rich from Bleeding Cool were absolutely communicating in the background? Like, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I know that's my paranoid thought for the day. But uh, it's just all so coincidental that uh, these articles get posted out with very little sourcing or evidence. And they're very wishy-washy. But they get a lot of attention in part because a lot of YouTubes and YouTubers signal boost those articles. And then Bleeding Cool writes articles about the YouTubers and the YouTubers write articles about Bleeding Cool. And it's like this big circle jerk. That's better than circle of life. That's more accurate of what's going on. Anyway, this thing all, all goes on. So then Dan Didio is removed and people are like, aha, now we will keep the white guys. Uh, <laughs> thank goodness Jim Lee is here. To help us keep the white guy superheroes. Uh, but, of course, then some time goes by and Death Metal expands a bit. And Future State is coming out. And it's it's two months and there's a lot more confusion. The whole story gets revived. And Rich gets to say, see, I was right. This is what I meant all along. This is When I said the character is going to be replaced forever, what I really meant was two months in January. I, mean, I, meant, I meant eight weeks. That's what I meant. Uh, when I said forever, I meant eight weeks. Uh, see, I'm right. I am a right. I am a journalist. I'm not a journalist. I'm, I'm a journalist. That's uh, it's, it's fun. This is the fun we have in comics. Anyway, so then finally January hits. Um, everybody is like their dire predictions. This is the end. Uh, DC uh, crap comics will be just sitting on the shelf. No one will be buying them. Um, it is it is the death of all of DC. And then the comics come out, and the comics are not terrible. Some are. Some were good. Some were average. You might say the comics that basically came out were like the comics that have been coming out for the last 20 years. There was a medley of comics with different levels of quality in that, in that assortment. And when I say quality, by the way, there's differing opinions. Um, you know, I, <laughs> Nerdette, who has a very nice channel, you should check that out, she liked Immortal Wonder Woman. She, she posted that was her face. She liked the art, and she was very fond of that book. I, it, it, that book really irked me, as you could probably tell in the reviews, because when I really don't like a comic, I just get super vague about it when I review it. And uh, I don't go into detail, because otherwise I'm going to just start ranting about it, and nobody wants to hear that. That's probably not true. Most people want to hear about that. But I don't want to hear about that, so I just get more vague. Anyway, the, to the point, some comics appealed to some people, some comics appealed to other people, and the world moved on. Uh, we're now nearing the end, and we're about to springboard into the new relaunch of the new DC, which is going to feel a lot like the current DC. I mean, Batman is pretty much just continuing from where it was. 
We have some new comics. We get the Brian Michael Bendis era of Justice League will now begin. And um, and we'll see. Uh, all in all, was Future State successful or a failure? Well, it kind of depends what what you uh, what you want to rate it on. If you want to rate it on sales, knock on wood. You just have to kind of picture me in your mind knocking on wood. I'm in a car, so I'm knocking on, I don't know, plastic, whatever this is made out of. Um, the sales appear to be higher than what they were in much of 2020. A lot of these comics seem to have sold more. How much more? We're not sure. Uh, amazing bananas more? No, but more. Okay, cool. Um, it, uh, it, it did not topple the company over. It did not, you know, it was not the breakaway hit of all of comics. It, uh, it more or less, um, yeah, I mean, it, it confirmed the worst fears of people who are not reading the comics at all. It did, you know, it, it didn't, nobody fell in love with it. Like, I, I don't know. I haven't seen anybody talk about how much they absolutely enjoyed everything that was there. But there were a few standouts. Um, there was general consensus that Swamp Thing was pretty much the, the champion, I think, of the line. Um, that I, I think consistently that was, you know, it, it, very few people had bad things to say about Swamp Thing. Um, you know, stepping down from that, I think a lot of people mostly liked Justice League. They liked DR Floors, Wonder Woman. They liked, uh, you know, a lot of people liked Green Lantern, um, although some people can never quite get up the hang up that they were getting. Uh, they were getting non-Hal Jordan uh, as part of that, but generally speaking, uh, Catwoman was another one. I think. I think actually, you know, I think the big winners of the whole thing were pro in terms of, of reactions across the board. Meaning, not not me. I had my favorites certainly, but overall, in the reviews and the feedback and kind of the aggregate of what people were saying, it felt like Swamp Thing and Catwoman were the hits, and then it kind of got very dispersed under there. Um, you know, like I said, I wasn't a fan of Immortal Wonder Woman. I wasn't a fan of Superwoman. Um, other, some other people were. I like Green Lantern. I know some other people didn't. Uh, it just kind of was all over the place uh, in terms of what people like. I'm trying to think of the title everybody hated. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. There was, there was a lot of titles that are just kind of dull, I think, um, that just, just seemed to go nowhere. It did, from my opinion, I think Future State suffered from a weird problem that I wouldn't have predicted going into it. And it was basically that the stories either seem to be killing time for, or, or they either seem to be uh, like there was too much story, like it should have been done in a one shot or a backup, or the story was, uh, there was just, you know, not enough. I think my, my complaint with say with Green Lantern, for example, is I would have rather had six issues instead of two. I think it would have told a better story. I would have enjoyed it. Same thing with Catwoman. Same thing with, I mean, Swap Thing, like, please just make that 24 issues. Like, I, I, I would have rather seen a lot of, some of these titles really go much further. I wouldn't have predicted that going in, that that was going to be the outcome. It was, it was, I was found, I found myself either wanting more or less. And I, I don't know that many of the comics felt like just right to me. Like, if, uh, like, I, like, I just like, okay, this is the perfect amount. Maybe Catwoman. Catwoman told a pretty tight little story. I thought that was a good little snippet of her life. Uh, Yara Floor, I, I could have used more because it did kind of bounce around a little bit, but uh, it, they still, the pages, the pages were good. It was fine. Um, overall, it, uh, it, 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 I think it left fans wanting more, which is not a bad thing. I think in general, their, their feeling was that you know, there were some characters that Future State didn't touch on that I think people would have liked to have seen a cover. And there were cases where the stories that people really dug and, and enjoyed, they they ended too quickly. And so all things considered, you know, fine. Um, the price point was a negative. I think the problem with the price point is that you had some comics that had, well, you know, two backup stories, for example, in the comic, and they got to be quite long. And you're talking about a $7.99 issue, and it felt like it hit the wall pretty hard, particularly when you were maybe interested in one story, and then you got backups that you didn't really care about. I think the, uh, I enjoyed the Mr. Miracle story. I did not enjoy the Black Racer story. I didn't enjoy the uh, Midnighter story. I'm a fan 
I, I can't really say I'm a black racer fan. I, I mean, I, I don't know. There's not enough to that character really to super dig, but I, I was a fan of Midnight, and I didn't, I didn't think that was very good. And I was left feeling like the uh, Superman, uh, you know, on War World story it was just like I didn't get anywhere close to as much of that as I would have liked. It, it, it felt like the backup stories consumed that, and then we're paying a high price for that. That, that left a weird taste in my mouth. I think overall the price point was a little, was a little weird. Um, in terms of teeing up the rest, in terms of teeing up March and beyond, um, you know, the the funny part is it it, it kind of feels like uh, for many of the books, it well, I mean, okay, so we kind of can break it into three camps. In the Batman world, a lot of stuff was being teed up in Batman that uh, you know basically we were you know the the magistrate and all the rest was being delivered. We're going to get the big you know, Joker uh, murders here, uh, the A-Day stuff that leads to the magistrate here in about a week. And, I mean, overall, it, it feels like uh, Future State was a kind of an odd interruption. It happened, but the stories are all going there anyway. And then I think there's a handful of comics, and in particular, I'm thinking about, uh, I'm thinking, I guess, mostly about Green Lantern, Um you know, a little bit Yara Floor. There were some comics that did a good job, I think, of, of teasing, I'd like to figure out what happens next. I'd like to figure out how we got to this world um, where the power battery went dead, and, and I'd like to figure out how we get to that. That's what the story Green Lantern is going to tell. Same thing with Yara Floor. We'd like to kind of know how this character came to be and, and uh, what her story is. And that's good. And then we got a bunch of stories that felt like filler. And these feel like stories where Maybe had them in the bank, uh, and they didn't really know what to do with them, so out they came. I mean, this is like the, the immortal Wonder Woman, and that was probably my, my issue with that. I'll, I'll get off of complaining about that, though. Like, some of these books, um, it just felt like they're there. Like, the Superman Wonder Woman comic. Like, I, I you know, it's a day in the life of Superman. The, the idea that John Kent bottles up Metropolis, I mean, sure. I, I, it, it just felt like somebody wrote an Elseworlds story. And DC paid for it, and then they're going through their archives, and they're like, oh, we should probably do something with this. And and they did. That's that's kind of how it came across. A few of these a few of these comics had that feel to it. Um, I'd say that uh, Future State was better off than Convergence. I think it'll have a better long-term effect. I think it'll be remembered a little bit more fondly. I would say that um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm actually more skeptical of March and Beyond. Because it, it doesn't it still doesn't feel like DC has a good anchor to what they're doing. They've got some comics out there I'm definitely looking forward to read, but it, it still feels kind of like all over the place. And I I feel like um, you know you've got to get some momentum in your line where you get very excited about what you're going to read. And I think that will be the case with some individual stories, but it, it still feels like the DC universe lacks you know cohesion. And maybe part of the problem is that with the whole idea of death metal and everything matters and, you know, omni continuity or whatever it happens to be like, what are going to be the big things that emerge that are the, you know, threats that the heroes get a rally around or, or the big kind of earth shaking moments. I'm not talking about events. I'm just talking about the comics that, you know, you get really into a definitive run. Use those words again. What are those going to be? I, I don't, I, I have a trouble, I have trouble picturing what those are, but all in all, uh, future state was, was largely a victim. I would say of a lot of things outside of its control. I think other people, you know, bleeding cool being high on the list took control of the narrative of what future state was and they, they ran with it. And in many cases, I think did great harm to what DC was trying to pull off. I think that uh, if people would have gone in maybe a little bit more open-minded and a little bit less like the, you know, the, the kind of the swirl of bad news and negativity, I think people would have maybe appreciated the stories more for just what they were, liked some, disliked others, and it wouldn't have had this baggage hanging over it. I think um, in 2020 in general, I think uh, DC, DC got shot several times by sites like Bleeding Cool. I, I think they, they definitely... Uh, that was anti-marketing. It's like the anti-life equation. It's anti-marketing. I think I think it was is hugely negative to what the company was trying to pull off, and I think it also they failed 
they failed at responding to that in a way that um, maybe put the site in its place. I don't know. Lesson for later. Marvel, I hope you're paying attention because the uh, this target will get aimed at you at some point. And then let's see if you can respond to it any better. But what did you think? Did you love Future State? Hate Future State? Meh. Like some, dislike some. Is my analysis decent? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like and subscribe and get in touch with me in the description of the video. We'll have all that kind of stuff. Cool beans. Oh, God. Did I just say that? Gross. Uh, I can't believe that came out of my mouth. I was looking at a at a barista stand and I, it just, it just happened. I'm sorry, children. That, that was, uh, that's the worst thing I've ever said on this channel. Thanks for listening.